This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. Hello everyone, it's Len again, and today I'll be showing you how I edit my videos. And I'm not necessarily going to be guiding you through a step-by-step -step process of how I use a certain application, but rather I'm going to kind of help you develop your editing style and some tips and tricks that I have. My secrets on graphics, color grading, on how to find music especially, how to edit to music, and also how to make your videos more immersive by using sounds. I have been holding back on doing this video for so long because I feel like my editing style has constantly fluctuated and I didn't really know where I was and I'm kind of in a space where I understand the rhythm and the entire process of editing out a video so without further ado Let's jump right on in. Let's start with the pro tips. Okay, first off, you have to wear comfy clothing to edit. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I am literally just staring at a screen for eight hours straight and my hand is so exhausted. I'm literally like searching up online for symptoms of carpal tunnel. So you wanna wear clothing that gets you into a mood for editing. There's two types of moods. I'm either in sweats and sweatpants and I'm all cozied out in my bed. Or if I really am into mindset to be productive and get things done, I put myself in a little nice outfit being like, you know, it's like a little work day for me. Plus, if you're editing on a laptop like me, a nice tip I have is that when your computer fan inevitably starts yelling at you, you can put it on your belly and it's like a little it's like a little nice, you know, warmer. My second tip is work with what you have. A lot of applications are extremely expensive. When I started editing videos in high school, I used iMovie and I also used Photoshop for all my graphics. Before having a tablet, I would literally use the trackpad to hand draw every single one of my graphics. I don't know how I did it, but that can be really bad for your wrist. But I found a way to make my videos look like the aesthetic that I wanted it to. So having extremely expensive equipment is not necessary. Now my workplace looks like this. I use Photoshop, Final Cut Pro 10, and Procreate on my iPad. Use shortcuts. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I started out, I used to go back and forth to clicking on each tool in the toolbar when I needed it. But now, once you learn the key shortcut for each tool, it's so much easier to press B and cut an image. In addition to that, if you don't know what shortcuts are, or you're curious about how to do this specific type of edit, YouTube is such a great resource. The way I taught myself how to edit essentially. There is a YouTube video for every basic skill set you need to have. And then lastly, learn by examples. Whether it's taking inspiration from your favorite movie franchise, color palettes from your favorite YouTuber, and I am not encouraging plagiarism whatsoever. That is bad. No, no, you're an artist not a copy machine, okay? Being able to start in a place where you want to experiment is how you eventually find your own style. For example, take a photo that you really like the color grading on and then try to recreate that. Considering that video editing has so many different tools and venues you can go down, it kind of helps you discover each one while making sure that you find what you like and applying it in your own work. Okay, that is it for the pro tips. Let's move on in to graphics and color grading. This is my second favorite part of editing right after music. One of the things that I got down is color grading. To make color grading an ease, be sure to film in RAW if you're using like a DSLR or even like a vlogging camera because this allows you to make more edits with white balance and the colors. Second, I've said this before, but throwing things off balance and then bringing it to your own balance. If you're using HSL sliders, color boards, color wheels, there's a lot of things to mess around with. So what I like doing is taking the cursor, dragging the tool all the way to to the extremes and then finding the middle that I like. Some of my editing traits that I've discovered by doing this is that I really like lowering the luminance of blues because when I have bright blue skies in my videos, it makes it way more vibrant and visible since it tends to get washed out by the camera. I also like my greens to be a little bit more yellow. And for my toning, I really love putting greens in the shadows because it reminds me of the way film photos look. And I like adding warm hues to my highlights. There's a lot of color combinations that you can mess around with. A good thing to check out is definitely your basic color theory, knowing what colors complement each other, the triads, and make sure that you aren't messing with red, yellow, and orange too much because that tends to be people's skin tone. Like you don't want your best friend to all of a sudden turn into an orange just because you saturated the oranges too much in your color correcting. Adjusting lighting is also a big part, pushing down the highlights and then edging up the mid-tones a little bit and edging down the shadows just the tiniest bit. So it creates a little bit of a flatter image. I don't like my videos to have too high contrast, but I also want to make sure that the frame still has dimensions. And of course, 
graphics. I love putting a lot of time and energy and thought into conceptualizing and executing my graphics, whether it's creating a really special intro, using little illustrations and animations. Oh, it's so up my alley and it's kind of how I refresh my editing and make sure I never get bored. When you're editing a video, think about the theme that you want to have for it. Do you want it to have like retro, vintage 80s music? Do you want it to be a little bit more chill, a little bit more of like K-pop R&B? By using music I find on Epidemic Sound, it also influences the way I choose a theme for the graphics of my videos. For instance, for my building my first mechanical keyboard video, I used this really upbeat song called Rhubarb Pie. So I dive straight into Procreate and using my typical tools that I usually do, I created a really colorful environment. Some tips I have for my own style, I use a lot of handwritten, I guess, tools. So things that I can easily mimic my own handwriting with on the screen. I really love using HP sketching pencils. I love using calligraphy pens. I'm also a sucker for serif fonts. Like I tried Futura out for a little bit. She's cute, but I really love like the little swoops and a little, ooh, I don't know, the loop de doops that happens in serif fonts. And I keep a consistent color palette. And if I need to find other colors to suit the video, I always still use my primary color palette as at least a foundation for finding those new hues and shades. I create little animations essentially by tracing over one copy of a title or a doodle that I've already done. It has this little squiggle effect. I also love experimenting with film effects, transitions, and overlays. Using overlays and different types of graphics can break up the pace of your video while also diversifying each frame. So if you have b-roll that you're trying to spice up, you can add like some titles, captions, some effects on top of it so that it's distinguished from the main part of your video. Let's dive into the actual editing, the meats and potatoes. My first step before I do graphics or color grading is to rough cut to the music. I center all of my editing around music. With graphics and color grading, you can create your own cohesive brand. Nevertheless, my favorite way to create my brand is choosing music and using it throughout my videos all throughout the year. When another person hears that, if they're able to think of your video the moment they hear that beginning lick, that's really powerful in my opinion. <laughs> in my creative process, music is the core of my video editing. Using Epidemic Sound has changed the way I've done my editing because it's really hard to find copyright free music that is good, that matches your atmosphere and style for your videos. Epidemic Sound music comes with all the rights included. With just my own subscription, I have access to so many sounds, genres of music, and artists. I can't wait to show y'all how I edit with it. So taking the initial raw footage that you have for your video. You do this by taking out the silences, you want to take out mistakes or I guess speaking parts that need editing, get the perfect frames, and then put on the music beneath it. As a famous kind of indie, kind of niche, you may not have heard of it, jazz, Hollywood, movie, one set. It's gotta be more than background music, right? I like finding songs that remind me of the themes, colors, and feel of the video. So a bright summery song is gonna feel a little bit different from a wintry song. show you how to edit to music. Forgive me, it's a music nerd coming out, but there's a lot more parts to music and a song than just the beat. You can edit to the rhythm, you can edit to the bass line, the melody, the backing vocals. And the way I do this is first, I listen to the song, I see what parts I want to emphasize. The easiest way to find where a note or a beat would hit in the music is by looking at the audio, see where the humps, the humps are, and then line that up with each frame that you want to sync it to. For an instance, in this part of the video where I am opening an egg carton, I sing up the sound of me opening the egg carton. So as you can see here, ah, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. Likewise, if your song is like two or three minutes and you have several moments in your video to get through, for an instance, like you're moving from getting ready to the day to going to school, you can edit the first part of your day where you're getting ready to the beat of the music, but then as you transition into another part of your day, you can instead edit to the melody. And that's a little bit of a finer detail, but using music to transition into different scenes, even when you're using the same song, that is a very noticeable way that you can do it and very creative. And it's just so 
satisfying when you put it all together, seeing it all line up so perfectly, and learning how to blend music and sounds together. Ah, oh, really smooth out your video. What I like to do is detach audio from your clips and then gradually fade them in and out over one another. So instead of a clip's audio abruptly ending to move onto another clip's audio, you instead kind of have this crescendo and decrescendo of sounds that weaves it all together really well. It accompanies the music way better and it makes your video flow. That's just one way to blend music and sound together. What I also like to do, which oh, is a little nerdy, it's a little nerdy. I like finding the notes in sounds of things. So like, you know, this jar has a sound. A lot of everyday objects that make sounds like this have a note and you can kind of incorporate that by finding where it fits into your song. So for an instance, take this clip of me playing piano right here and how I transition the piano into the background music. See what happened there? You see how it transitioned into the song? Little things like that really takes your editing to the next level, y'all. It really does. Sometimes my friends would be playing an instrument in the background of my videos. I really love finding the chord in that song that will transition it through to the rest of my music in the video. And sound effects. I love using sound effects. Sound effects can be just as big of a branding tool for your videos as anything else. Like, it's not a Lin video if you don't hear crickets at the beginning, right? So besides using sound effects during transitions or to hallmark certain parts of your video's brand, you can also use it as an emphasizing tool. If there's important information that pops up on the screen, sometimes I'll use a little mouse click to emphasize it. Or as for this video, I use it as an immersive tool to create an environment. So listen to what this sounds like with the sound effects. And then let's see what it sounds like without the sound effects. As you can see, me using the static for the static transition or the typing sounds, the mouse clicks and the scrolling and the boings for each letter of the title. It becomes far more engaging than what it was before with just background music. So using the two can be really handy because you know, at the end of the day, music is sound. Sound is also music. The two are very much intertwined. And lastly, it can also be an editing tool in case you have some messed up audio, like your mic cuts out while you're filming and you really wanted to get like that one sound effect. Somehow it just got lost in translation. You can easily add it back in. Thank you to Epidemic Sound once again. They are awesome, they are amazing. Epidemic Sound is so easy and is really flexible. They have over 35,000 music tracks. They have 90,000 and plus sound effects. They're all wonderfully and professionally curated so it can aid you in your video making journey. You can sign up with my special offer below for a 60 day free trial. After that, you can pay monthly or yearly and cancel anytime. Be sure to check out the link in my description and you can also learn more about Epidemic Sound and what they do. They're awesome. Okay, I hope you guys can take these editing tips and put it all together and get a beautiful final cut of your videos. Keep practicing, keep watching, keep learning, and then you'll get somewhere where you're gonna be proud of. Let me know if you want a part two where I dive into more depth about certain editing techniques. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to add me on social media if you use any of these techniques. I'd love to see your projects. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll see y'all in the next video. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye! Thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video.